Hearing loss can be a devastating development in the course of your life or that of a loved one. Struggling to hear our favorite music or make out a conversation in a crowded room has become a reality for nearly half a billion people worldwide. For those suffering from significant hearing loss, a proven technology with a 40-year track record has adapted to the modern age and is changing the lives of people all over the world. My hearing loss apparently goes all the way back to my late teens. And uh, I was drafted into the Army. And when I went for the physical, I didn't pass. And when I got into the workplace, I was a bank teller. You have the cages with the bars and the glass. And I was having trouble hearing the uh, customers. You change your whole persona uh, when you can't understand somebody. Diabetes, cardiovascular disease, smoking, all of those things can impact the health of our ears. And if we think about it, we're exposed to noise and medications and things throughout our lifetime that impact our hearing. In the inner ear, there's little hair cells. And as they die off, we need sound to be made louder in order to understand it. Hearing aids are very appropriate and they really are the first go-to. But as hearing loss gets to be more significant, more in that moderate to profound range, there aren't enough hair cells to use that amplified sound. I've tried hearing aids uh, of many sorts. So I tried this one, I tried that one, or I go to a different audiologist. Usually have to turn her head into the person, you know, or make people repeat things and, and what have you. And I found that I made a lot of guesses as to what people were saying. And who knows if I gave the right answer. You do withdraw. You, you avoid uh, the gathering. You, you avoid those situations where there's other noises. So we see many examples of people who used to be highly engaged uh, in their social life, in the workforce, that have now started to withdraw. And once you start losing that hearing, uh, whether it's a social stigma, um, whether it's an embarrassment, uh, the amount of workload that goes in to trying to process that information, and people start to think this just isn't working for them and it isn't worth it anymore. And they don't go to that party, they don't go to the job, um, and they stay isolated at home. Uh, and it's frustrating for us as clinicians because we know that it's highly preventable. So oftentimes when patients come to me and they've had their hearing aids, they're still missing information. Sounds don't seem very clear. Uh, they're missing pieces to the puzzle is what they'll say, or it's a radio station not quite in tune. Look, hearing is complex, right? It's more than just your ears picking up that sound. Hearing loss is tightly connected to overall health, and it's a growing body of research right now worldwide. Uh, we know a key part of healthy aging is maintaining your hearing and maintaining those social interactions. The hardest thing for me was very personal, and, and that was uh, going to a concert where my daughter uh, was playing the flute and uh, she's a professional musician and studied her whole uh, childhood and she was very, very good, but I just couldn't hear her. If you've bought hearing aids and you decide that they're gonna stay in the drawer because they're not helping you, it's time to make a decision to look at another option. I've been practicing audiology for 25 years and the last 20 have been specifically in the area of cochlear implants. Cochlear implants are a surgically implanted device that has been approved by the FDA and have been around for 40 years. Um, what I have seen is that the technology and the access that cochlear implants can provide to patients is just astounding. And it, out of everything that I've done in my career, the relationships and the life-altering outcomes uh, from technology have been from cochlear implants. So I've been doing cochlear implants for a long time and I will tell you that it is the most rewarding thing that I have done. Putting in a cochlear implant and activating that patient is the most gratifying thing that we do in this part of clinical medicine. Uh, it's as close to magic as we get. Number one, I'm just taken aback by the fact that I actually can hear out of that ear. I'm hearing the air conditioner, which I would never hear, but I could hear again. And so I stopped and I said to them, I said, you know, I can hear you you know, better than you can hear me. <laughs> so there's often a misconception uh, that cochlear implantation might be very expensive and not covered, and actually that's not true here in the United States. That cochlear implantation is typically covered by Medicare, Medicaid, and commercial payers, and is usually within the reach for all patients who are appropriate. Part of the core mission for cochlear is raising the awareness regarding the importance of diagnosis and treatment of all types of hearing loss. 
We know it's massively underdiagnosed. We know it's massively undertreated worldwide. The sooner we identify hearing loss and we manage it, the better the outcome is for patients. The technology that we use from a cochlear implant is obviously extremely advanced, um, but there's a part that the patient plays in their success of their cochlear implant. In Bob's case, it was quite evident that he was highly motivated, highly educated, had done his research beforehand. We know that rehab is a crucial part to success with cochlear implantation, just the same way it is when you get a hip replacement. It isn't you get a hip replacement, you go home, and then you're running a marathon two days later. You go to physical therapy, and that's the same process that we see with a cochlear implant. And a highly motivated patient that's eager to pursue this intervention typically does extremely well. When I look back at these years uh, since that I have gotten my cochlears, when I first started, I had an 80 plus percent loss of hearing. I was very passionate about getting my life changed. I was passionate about solving this issue as best I could. In reality, this is a quick, safe, outpatient procedure. People are often back at work and engaging with their different parts of their life within uh, a few days to a week from the time of surgery. Once they learn, this is actually just a very small incision that occurs right behind their ear. It's not a visible scar. There's no cosmetic change. Um, it becomes a, a much more accessible procedure for them. You have a right to be fearful of any time you have a surgery, but uh, being able to go right home afterwards, I tell you, I had no uh, negative reaction whatsoever. But one of the great things about the cochlear is I can actually use Bluetooth and get my phone call. We see people walking down the street with one earbud, and that's their telephone, you know? Well, I got two, it rings in your ears, and, and uh, even that fast-talking person, I can hear them. So you have high quality uh, hearing uh, on the cell phone by Bluetooth. So research has shown us that people will ignore or deny their hearing loss for 10 or 12 years before they pursue any kind of intervention. The cochlear implant is an elective process, and so I encourage patients to seek an evaluation. When we look at the research and we look at how well patients are doing, I think it's important um, and it's, it's your due diligence for your own hearing health to explore it as an option. One of the happiest parts of my life was uh, going to my daughter's concert. Uh, after having gone for so many before that where I couldn't hear her playing the flute uh, and uh, I was able to hear her. This is just incredible. I know that's my daughter playing the flute. If I were to say one thing to someone or anyone uh, who is uh, anticipating getting a cochlear implant, I would say it won't just change your hearing, it'll change your life. Cochlear, here now and always. For more information, visit cochlear.com.